So we're going to wrap this series up by looking at a very basic example of uh, a application you might want to implement carbon into. And this is going to include looking at a model that we've created inside of a fake application to go ahead and grab a post from a database. Now at the moment you can see that the uh, text here on the screen says post was created and then this just gives the date that's stored in the database. Of course you can format this in whatever way you like but we're going to be using carbon to do this so we can use all of the functionality within carbon as we've learned throughout the series. So let's go on and look at the base code that we're going to be working with and then we'll use carbon to make this a little bit nicer. So over to the code base then and I've created a very basic representation of what you might find inside of a model. Uh, most of the code that I'm going to be using I wouldn't recommend to actually use. This is just to demonstrate how you might be pulling records back, uh, implementing them into a model somehow. Now this could be with any framework that you're using, any very light framework that doesn't already use carbon to allow you to uh, manipulate dates and format dates with carbon. So let's take a look at what's happening here then. We are creating a new instance of this post uh, class here, which all is doing is uh, it's extending model, which is our base model, and we're defining which table we're pulling records from. In this case, I just have a, a database here called project, I have a table called posts, and I have one post in here, and the title and created date are just here. So what we're doing then on here is we're saying post was created, and then we're accessing the created property here. Now if we look at this base model, which is what we're going to be modifying, you can see here that we've got a new database connection. Obviously don't do this because this would be uh, within some kind of container. You wouldn't actually instantiate this every time uh, you created a model. And if we head down here, we can see this get first method, which we're using on here. So get first, all this is doing is it's pulling back the first record. And we're using a protected method here, get first record. And all that's doing is it's querying the database for everything from the particular table that we're using. Remember this table here refers to this uh, property just here. And then we are just limiting it by one. So that's pretty much it. Now, what we're also doing is we are fetching an object from this and we're setting this to this data. And the reason for that is then we can access this data inside of here uh, using the get uh, magic method, which allows us to do things like the following. So for example, public function gets title, and then we can just return this title. Obviously that's beyond the scope of this video. What we're interested in is when we go ahead and pull in created, so the created property on this object, which is the created day here, we want to have this as a carbon instance so we can do anything we want with it. In this case, we're going to be looking at using the diff for humans method to output this uh, to say something like two hours ago or three hours ago. Um, so we need to modify the base model to allow us to do this. And obviously, depending on the framework or code you're currently using, this is going to dramatically differ. But this is really just an example to show you how to work with this in a real world scenario. So the first thing that we're going to do then is you'll notice we have this protected get collection method down here. Now I've created this as a kind of example of you would uh, of sort of collecting data from your model and then doing whatever you need with it before you output it. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say this data equals and we're going to wrap this in this get collection like so. Let's just pull that down so it's a little bit more readable. And all this is doing then is it's setting the data property on here, which remember we can access using this uh, getter here, this uh, magic method. And get collection now allows us to modify this in any way we want. This of course could be a separate class altogether. You could create a new collection object, whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do then is in our post model, we're going to go ahead and we're going to define the dates in here uh, within our table. So for example, created, you might have updated, you might have last visited. 
These basically just relate to any columns that you have in your database. For now though, we're gonna work with created. So now inside of our base model, we have access to this date, as long as that's set. If it's not set, we can go ahead and pop it up here as a public dates. And we can just set that to an empty array as the default. So under our get collection method, then we want to transform our dates. And what we're doing by transforming them is just returning a carbon object with that date inside of it. So we're going to be using the carbon parse method to do this. So let's go ahead and uh, loop through all of the dates that are available. And we'll go ahead and say for each this date as date. You can obviously check here if you want if it is empty before you go ahead and loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to say object, which is the object that we pass through here. Remember, we're passing this first record here into it. And we're going to say object date. So that's the uh, property or the uh, columns that are stored within this array. And we're going to modify them. And we're going to say this new carbon parse. And then we're going to pass in the date. And that date is object date. So essentially all we're doing here is when we find a record that we need through whichever method that we're using on that uh, base model, we're taking it, we're looking at the dates that we want to transform in terms of carbon, we're looping through them and then we're updating that but we're returning a new carbon instance here. Now you may have noticed we don't have a new carbon method on this, uh, on this uh, class. So we can go ahead and create that now. So let's create a protected function called new carbon. So this is a method to return a new instance of carbon. So all we do is we say return new carbon. And you'll notice at the top here it's already imported, but you would have to go ahead and do that if you didn't already have it there. So now that we've done this then, let's just recap about what we're doing. Taking the date, so in this case it will be object created. So remember our object contains that created property. And we're saying this new carbon, so we're grabbing a new carbon instance. We're using the parse method, which we've already looked at, and we're passing in the created date here. And then if you had any others, this would just do the same for each one in this loop. So now what's going to happen then is when we refresh, we won't see any difference. So it looks exactly the same. But what we can do now is we can go ahead and let's just do a var dump on this actually. So let's do a var dump on post and let's just comment this out for now let's see the difference here so we now see created rather than created being that uh, as part of that object that's returned uh, when we query using PDO instead of it being this it's now a carbon instance so what we can do now then is with this created property we can say things like format if we wanted to, and we could choose a format in here, or we can use something like diff for humans or any other methods that are available in carbon that we've already looked at. So it's just overriding that property. And instead of it just being a normal uh, string that's coming back from our database table, it's now a carbon object. And there we go, when we refresh, you can see the result of using that new method. So depending on the structure of your application, you can use carbon to override date properties coming from an external source. This doesn't have to be a database. It could be an API from somewhere. Pull that back and do something like the following. Obviously, this is just a very basic example of how uh, some kind of project might be structured or some kind of framework might be structured. We can go ahead and pull in a new instance of carbon and we can choose the properties that we want to override as we've already seen. And then we have that collection of methods and all of the other functionality that comes with Carbon.